An interconnected group of recent high school grads navigates through personal issues while enjoying their last summer before moving on to college. For Griffin Aurigan, the future has always been looming until suddenly it was there. The day that they all have been waiting for since the first day of senior year, summer break, one last chance to not care, to call it off or get it on, to make plans or revisit them. One last chance to love yourself or pretend to be someone else. 72 days worth of chances, to act on all crushes, make a few stupid decisions and go all in, because what's there to lose? As a prep school grad, he is preparing to enter Columbia University, thanks to nepotism, despite wanting to attend Berkeley College of Music. Foster, Alec's best friend and co-worker, is attempting to go through a wish list of girls he would like to sleep with. Alec believes that it is offensive, but Foster is determined to see it through. However, he is repeatedly rejected and ignored by women. Aaron and Alec, a high school power couple for two years, agree to break up before leaving for college. Audrey, a working-class student and Aaron's best friend, is rejected by all but one of her college choices, as her grades were average as she needed to work while in school. Disappointed, she decides to pursue her last choice slash waitlisted option while taking up a job as a nanny to precocious child actress, Lila. She imparts all this distress to Aaron as they get ready for a party. Chad and Reese, two nerdy and unpopular best friends working at the local frozen yogurt store try to find a way to get to this popular kid's party. At the party, Griffin re-encounters Phoebe Fisher, a childhood friend he has always had a crush on. Mason, another of his old friends, catches Griffin eyeing her and jokes about Griffin still carrying a torch for Phoebe. He tells him that she's making a documentary and Griffin can volunteer for an interview, that way he can get to spend some time with her. Though they plan to be respectful even while apart, Aaron is shocked when Alec quickly falls under the spell of Paige Wilcox, a popular, vapid classmate who immediately snatches him up. Griffin finally crosses paths with Phoebe as he gets a beer refill. To his delight, she recognizes him almost instantly. Mason jumps in, he volunteers Griffin to help Phoebe with her documentary. Phoebe finds the idea appealing as it would lend a different perspective to her project. She invites Griffin to reach out whenever he's free. The next day Audrey gets to her anointed job. There she comes to know that Lila's wealthy and self-centered mother had been an extra in 16 candles, and is determined to make Lila a star. Though rude and curt at first when her mother introduced them, Lila quickly warms to the ground at Audrey. Foster's wish list continues with zero accomplishments. His next endeavor is a virginal Christian girl, Christine Purdy. Alec reminds him that he might need to attend Bible study for that to happen. They're busy working their job mowing lawns when Paige stops by showing off her brand new wheels, a graduation present. She's there to invite Alec to a bonfire party happening that night. Griffin goes over to Phoebe's studio to record the interview. As they wrap up the session he points that he feels his answers were totally unremarkable. Phoebe assures him that he did great and that he wouldn't be so unsure if he'd watched one of her others. She walks over to her editing desk and Griffin follows her, his gaze raking her workspace. She had an incredible setup. Phoebe explains that it's a favor from one of her teachers who knows the guy owning that studio. She could do so much on her laptop but this place had full-on effects and sound mixing. She still has not gotten the hang of the technical stuff, especially the audio, but she is confident she will get there. Bending over, Griffin fixes it for her. He has been recording stuff since he was a kid. They walk back to the subway station and Phoebe explains to Griffin her project is not for NYU but a summer festival. Griffin tells her he'll be attending Columbia. Phoebe points that would mean they would both be in New York after summer. They part ways at the station with Phoebe thanking Griffin for the interview as well as his audio expertise. Griffin, thinking the moment as good as any, asks her out. But she initially declines, explaining she must spend the summer focusing on making her film. She urges him to not take it personally. Though Aaron secretly misses Alec, she tries to move on, focusing on her thankless job as a personal assistant. Her first day isn't ideal as she ends up messing everyone's coffee order. Audrey and Lila sit waiting in an audition queue where Audrey learns how controlling Lila's mother is. Alec spends a good time with Paige at the bonfire party. She points that they've had so many classes together but Alec never noticed her. Alec claims that is untrue, he remembers having sophomore Spanish, junior literature and history with her. Paige drunkenly admits to always having a crush on Alec because he was so smart as well as funny. She had never thought that they would have a chance to date because he and Aaron were always such a perfect couple. Alec asks her to not mention Aaron, their breakup is still fairly raw for him. Paige apologizes and pulls him in to make out by the fire. At home Griffin sends an audio mix to Phoebe to help her with her tweaks. His father comes up to his room to remind him to send letters asking his father's friends for recommendations for good fraternities to sign up with at Columbia. Griffin does not want to do it but his father reminds him that those are the same friends who helped him get into Columbia in the first place. He must show some gratitude. At a Cubs baseball game, Aaron, attending the game with Audrey, who has gotten baseline tickets from her employer, asks Audrey what does her job description entail working for a woman who does not have a job. Audrey explains that she's mostly taking care of her child, Lila, along with alphabetizing her Poe collection and making sure that nothing in life is dull or hard, or slightly annoying. 
Aaron offers to get Audrey an internship at her agency if she is interested. Aaron's job is infuriating and makes her want to cry in the bathroom, but it looks great on a CV. Audrey thanks her for the offer but she could not afford to work without getting paid. As Aaron is engrossed in her phone, zooming in on a photo of Alec and Paige kissing, the ball flies right over her, along with one of the players. Both the player and the ball end up on her lap. On the bright side the team is able to score. The player, Ricky Santos, apologizes for his ungentlemanly landing and hops back onto the field. But as the game wraps up, Aaron receives a signed baseball from Ricky, asking her out to dinner. Audrey swears if she and Aaron hadn't been best friends since the dawn of time, they would definitely never have been friends at all. Dates keep dropping quite literally into Aaron's lap. Griffin sits teaching guitar to a couple of young kids at a music shop. He gets a text from Phoebe thanking him for his mix. They get into light conversion via text and Griffin manages to convince her to go watch a movie with him as a strict no-date thing. Chad and Reese stop at a bar on the way to his sister's wedding rehearsal dinner, and are mistaken for professional traders, as businessmen frequenting the bar. Foster sits at Christine Purdy's dinner table as she relays her distress over people shunning her out of popular circles because she is close to Jesus. She feels like she can't even say the name Jesus without making people uncomfortable. Foster second her opinion. He shares how guys at his gym had laughed at him when he had told them he would be going to Bible study. Christine is surprised to find out that Foster is into bodybuilding. She wrings her hands asking everyone at the table to join in for a prayer thanking God for food and for her new friend Foster who has been a beacon of hope for her amid the confusion and darkness of adolescence. Christine's little brother whispers to Foster advising him to give up and go home as he has no shot with Christine since she does not so much as kiss boys. Phoebe and Griffin enjoy the screening of The Big Lebowski. Griffin is actually surprised Phoebe has never watched it before. Phoebe declines his offer for dinner, saying that she had already promised her mom that she'd be home for dinner. Griffin reminds her that that's a good thing or else they would have treaded dangerously close to the date territory. Not that it would have been their first. Phoebe recalls their first hangout out, 8th grade at Blade Land. It was a retro night with the four wheel skates and the disco ball. They had a couple skates session with a cheesy slow song playing in the background and Griffin and Phoebe had to do a lap. They did too so Griffin could work up the courage to hold Phoebe's hand. He didn't though, which was good because it might have taken them both down. Griffin adds that he would have gladly cushioned her fall. Phoebe sighs, recalling that Griffin left for school soon after and they were all plunged into the abyss of high school. One evening Audrey sits by Lila doing her nails when she questions Audrey about her life, if she has a boyfriend. Audrey used to have one, Tyler. He was kind of a slacker, Netflix and chill was his life mantra. Lila asks if he was so bad why did Audrey date him. Aaron, her friend as Audrey tells Lila, wanted Audrey to date him and he wasn't the worst option at that time. Lila questions why Audrey would settle for a guy who was just okay. Audrey didn't know the answer to that. Nobody has ever asked her such a thing. Ricky takes Aaron out to dinner at a cutesy diner he frequents. He confesses that the place reminds him of home, Falls City, Texas. It's actually more like a small town, with a couple thousand people. He had actually grown up on a ranch. Aaron is pleasantly surprised, this must be a big change for him. He should be out getting drunk with his groupies. Ricky shares that he has an opportunity here that he does not want to blow. His parents sacrificed a lot to get him here and he feels like he owes it to them to take it seriously. Aaron confesses that he's making it really hard for her to judge him, keeping in mind that it's no secret how ballplayers are. Ricky agrees with Aaron's judgment, most of his teammates are set but he is still playing off of minor league contract. Besides, drunk groupies are not exactly his idea of fun. Aaron asks him to show her his idea of fun. Ricky takes Aaron to his favorite country dance bar. Chad and Reese start to frequent the bar dressed as sharp businessmen. They enjoy drinks, conversation, and karaoke with the businessmen, bluffing their way into their circle. Griffin and Phoebe view a clip from the documentary where a couple plan for a long-distance relationship, and both predict it won't last. He helps her mix the audio, becoming closer. Phoebe compliments him about his editing talents, finding it unbelievable that he's willing to waste it all to go study business. She wants to know if he ever considered studying music instead. Griffin has, in fact Berkeley was his first choice, but a career in art is not exactly a safe and steady one. He had even gotten accepted at Berkeley, but his dad wanted him to go to Columbia, and he had some pull there, so. In an effort to change the subject Griffin remarks that he's sure New York restaurants are great but Chicago owns gyros. And barbecue, Phoebe supplies. Griffin agrees, Lem's barbecue cannot be topped. Phoebe finds it unbelievable that he would rate Lem's over smokes, consistently voted best barbecue in Chicago. They agree to disagree until the day each of them grabs their best barbecue dinner from Lem's and Smokes, respectively, and meet each other for a showdown. Alec offers to wash Paige's car for her as she complains on and on about how unnecessary college is for her. After all, who wants another four years of classes with teachers and all that? She just wants to start doing something now. Like maybe starting her own reality show. Alec thinks it's a little prerequisite of fame to do that. Aaron is driving around with Ricky in his old pickup truck sharing her breakup story. Ricky has had his share of the feeling, he had to end a three-year relationship back home. He's been playing all over at the time and it was getting hard. 
A little boy in a passerby car shouts Ricky's name and he waves him back complimenting the boy on his baseball cap. Aaron watches the cute exchange and could not help but ask Ricky how nice it must be to get all these fans around. It is nice for Ricky, two months ago he was playing for the Tennessee Smokies and then a guy got traded, followed by two other guys getting hurt and here he was. Aaron finds him amazing, he's only 22, paying his own bills, having his own place. She feels so far away from accomplishing that. Ricky doesn't agree with her opinion of herself, he thinks that she's doing alright. To him, she strikes as a person who has the whole world at her feet. Becoming regulars and networking with the other patrons, Chad and Reese are eventually approached by two 20-somethings, Janet and Claire, who work in advertising. Their influence is a tad bit commanding as they offer the boys to drop with the pleasantries and order some shots. Despite Phoebe's initial resistance, she soon begins dating Griffin. On the decided date, the two of them bring their best meals for the showdown at Phoebe's place. After a hot, nerve-wracking session, the two of them lay splayed on Phoebe's couch unable to move. They decide to call it a draw. Phoebe picks up a napkin to wipe some ketchup off the side of Griffin's lips. But the tender moment along with the building up tension between them compels her to lean in for a kiss. After his failed attempt to hook up with a Christian girl, Foster thinks he is making progress with Brenda Bonner. His night takes a mortifyingly uncomfortable turn when Brenda's drunk dad comes home and joins them on the couch as Foster sits there naked from the waist down, barely covered by a throw blanket. Alec points that he should maybe take this as a sign and let the wish list get some rest. One morning as Griffin gets to his guitar lessons, he witnesses his father, doting and affectionate, with some other woman. A beautiful brunette with strikingly piercing blue eyes Griffin was sure would haunt him for a while. The one time Aaron finally manages to get everyone's order right, the meeting gets moved up unbeknownst to her. So everyone has already been wrapped up and gone off to grab their own coffee before it was even nine. Griffin shares the devastating news about his father with Phoebe who suggests, that maybe he should tell his mom before she finds it out in some other way. Griffin detests his father for putting him in such a position. Just when everything was finally falling into place, he just had to go and ruin it. Griffin apologizes for laying it all on Phoebe especially since she's under enough stress due to her film. Which, according to him, was coming along nicely. Phoebe shrugs the compliment off, saying that flattery will not win her prize money. What she really needs is ideas. Griffin assures her that it is already amazing, so much so that she should start wearing a beret like Parisian filmmakers. Phoebe confides that she has to win the festival to pay for college. She has applied for every loan, every grant. She wants to win this so desperately that she cannot really explain it in words. Griffin sits with Mason at his rollerboard pier asking him his plans after the summer. Mason does not have any except that he's thinking of going off to pursue a profession in rollerboarding. Mason asks what the deal is between him and Phoebe. Do they plan on seeing each other in New York or is this just a summer fling? Griffin admits that the two of them haven't gotten to talk about it yet. Mason invites him to a 4th of July party at his cabin. He insists on bringing Phoebe along. As Griffin goes over to pick Phoebe up that evening he is in for another shock. The door is answered by the same woman Griffin saw canoodling with his father a few days ago. She's Phoebe's mom. To his great shock, Griffin learns that his father is having an affair with Phoebe's single mother. As they leave Phoebe's home she notices something being off about Griffin. She asks if her mother has said something to him. Griffin chalks the whole thing off to not expecting to meet her mother right then. An uncountable number of shots later, Chad finds himself in Claire's apartment while Reese is swept off to Janet's. The two boys meet at dawn outside the bar, elated to have finally lost their virginity cards in such an unexpected fashion. Aaron meets up with Audrey at her work while taking care of a very drunk Margaret, thanking the heavens that Lila is spared this visual as she spends the weekend at her grandparents' house. Aaron is worried Audrey won't have enough time to meet with the college representative scheduled for the day. Audrey explains that the admissions guy from Clark's is going to be in town but she is not sure if she wants to meet with him. Aaron finds Audrey's statement unbelievable considering that the only way to get off of the college waitlist is to get a chance to meet with him. She should be calling every day, getting recommendation letters, and sending flowers to his wife. Audrey isn't sure if she wants to spend four years in Dubuque. Alec plans to break up with dull-witted Paige and unsuccessfully tries to text Aaron about how much he misses her and how they may have made a mistake breaking up. On yet another date, Ricky takes Aaron on a tour of a baseball field. They climb up the scoreboard chamber where Ricky has laid a picnic setup. The view from that vantage point is breathtaking. Aaron finds it commendable what Ricky has achieved in merely three months. Ricky shrugs his shoulders, he was batting 344 the day he fell onto her lap. She is his good luck charm. The next morning as Aaron steps out of her house, she is surprised to see Alec waiting for her outside. He wanted to talk to her, has sent her a couple of messages in the last few days but Aaron's life has been extremely whirlwind with her job and Ricky. Alec confesses that he has been thinking quite a lot about them. The summer is passing by in a blur and he would love to see her before they leave for college. At first, Aaron does not know how to respond. They had an agreement, and then he had gone and posted pictures with his new girlfriend not 15 minutes after they broke up. Alec apologizes to Aaron, assuring Aaron that it was nothing like that. 
Just then Ricky rolls in, there to pick Aaron up, making Alec jealous as he learns of her relationship with Ricky. Mason's Independence Day party is a hit. Foster is not having much luck. At the party, his yet another hookup attempt meets an ill fate when he discovers that his wish list has gone viral, and no girl would even consider sleeping with him now. Though enthralled at first, Chad feels guilty about deceiving the women, who they are sincerely connecting with, and is concerned that they are getting too deep into the lie. Claire wants him to have lunch with her dad who is a big honcho at Morgan Stanley. Reese begs him to keep the deception going, reminding him that they have never before been so popular and well-liked. Besides, in a few weeks they will be leaving for college and the girls will probably move on to some workforce douchebag way worse than them. One night as Audrey and Lila lay on a blanket in her backyard stargazing, Audrey learns that Lila is uninterested in being a star and feels controlled by her overbearing mother. In turn, Audrey confesses her own feelings of disappointment that she is always settling for less. Her ex-boyfriend, college, even this job. Lila wants to know why Audrey would settle for anything at all. Lila admits that Audrey is exceptionally good at her job and that she's her favorite person that has ever worked for her mother. Phoebe and Griffin ditch the party by nightfall to settle by the beach and watch the fireworks. Phoebe much prefers it this way, in a way she has always felt like an outsider on the inside. Sometimes she feels like she's floating over her body, watching her interactions. An observer for sure, Griffin feels the same. Phoebe admits to being unsure about her capabilities to love. She wonders whether she is destined to observe it from afar. Griffin confesses to wishing he could feel less sometimes. Turning over to her side, Griffin admits that he would in all honesty like to be the person with whom she could let her guard down and let love move in. He loves that she is a way to wise for her year's artist and that she looks like an angel, a goddess, and a nerdy librarian all at the same time. Phoebe cuts him mid-rant with a kiss as she rolls atop him. Griffin kisses her back but he has something important to tell her. He could not do it though, could not find the courage to ruin that beautiful moment. Instead he does another brave thing by professing his absolute love for her. At Ricky's new apartment Aaron throws his team a housewarming barbecue party which turns out to be beyond what Ricky could have done. He expresses his deepest gratitude to her as they stand on his balcony. Discussing the disappointment with Alec, Foster admits that, due to his busy schedule in school, he is actually a virgin. The wish list was his attempt to make up for lost time. He can always forget the whole thing and start with a clean slate. Griffin is working on a special occasion mix for Mason when his mom knocks on his door. She's there to tell him he has a cute friend waiting for him downstairs. Griffin gets downstairs to find Phoebe in his living room. She looks haggard. She tells Griffin that her mom found out the piece of shit she was dating is married. Griffin urges her to step outside because he has something he needs to tell her. As they step outside Griffin confesses to knowing that it was his dad that her mom has been dating. Phoebe is devastated, she blames Griffin for saying nothing and impulsively breaks it off with him. Mad with rage, Griffin strides up to where his dad's car has just pulled over. He screams at him, that now he knows why he goes to the gym so much. His dad apologizes, saying that he has put an end to it, that this was something that Griffin would not be able to understand until he's much older. Griffin snaps at him to quit telling him that he does not understand for he understands perfectly. He has messed with so many lives and all he has to say in his defense is that all that meant nothing to him. Waiting for an audition on America's Got Talent that could help launch a career, Audrey and Lila simultaneously decide to skip it and go to the beach, as Lila desires. Her mother is furious she missed the audition, firing Audrey, who happily parts ways with a cheered Lila. Apologizing directly to Phoebe's mother, Griffin admits to having no sense of what to do, so he did nothing instead. He realizes that both Phoebe and her mother are eager to lump him in with his father's wrongdoings but he is not his father. And he is saying that, knowing full well the kind of person he is. He understands how awful it must have been for her and how it must have impacted Phoebe, but she means so much to him. Maybe he had just gotten selfish for not wanting their relationship to end. Though Ricky tells Aaron that they are exclusive, surprising him at his home with his favorite meal from his favorite diner, she encounters his ex. He hastily explains that they are still friends and they talk often so their situation is complicated. Aaron suggests him to take all the time he needs to uncomplicate his situation. Griffin then sends Phoebe her favorite takeout meal from Smokes and she invites him to the documentary premiere. As his mom comes in to pack some last-minute items for college, Griffin decides to tell her about his father's infidelity. Eventually, Chad confesses he and Reese are actually only 18. An amused Claire reveals that she and Janet knew the entire time, but had gone along with it because they genuinely liked them, insisting she finds him cool. Relieved, Chad jokingly asks if they can get married that day, and they resume their relationship. Though eventually accepted by her safety school, Audrey, when told initially she would be on academic probation, excluding her from much of student life on campus, she declines. She may not know what she is going to do instead of attending her backup school on a probationary basis, but whatever it is, she's willing to kick the hell out of it. Later, Alec leaves Foster to handle an invoice as he departs to reconnect with Aaron. Foster meets with the client, an attractive divorcee, who seductively admits she has been watching him all week, inviting him in. Foster looks back at the audience with a smile before closing the door. 
Mason's attempt at professional rollerboarding is a hit and he gets his ticket to the fall season tour. At the Labor's Day party at Aaron's house, she asks Audrey how her interview with Clark College went. Audrey tells her that she is now volunteering for Teachers Without Borders, having discovered her talent for working with children. Aaron is hesitant to find the news exciting and she asks if Audrey does plan to go to college in the future though. Audrey explains that she and Aaron come from very different backgrounds and Aaron has got different opportunities because of that. Audrey is sure Aaron is going to be very successful someday but she just needs her to not judge Audrey's version of success. Alec comes to Aaron's party as well, claiming that her parents sent him an invite. Aaron admits that she is glad he came. They decide to be friends again, moments before kissing and possibly renewing their relationship. Cusp, Phoebe's film is well received at the premiere. Griffin congratulates her for commendable work and Phoebe thanks him for coming. She appreciates Griffin's apology to her mother, saying it means a lot to her and that it could not have been easy for him to say. She asks about things with Griffin's own family and he tells her that since his dad never owned up to the misdemeanor, he had to tell his mom himself. She is a saint though and they are trying to work it out through therapy. But he will not be here to witness it as he is leaving for Berkeley that Friday. He has decided to follow his dreams since he's already scorching the earth with his dad. He is not paying, Griffin will be doing it via financial aid. Griffin stands at Blade Land watching the couple roll past him, hands interlocked, when Phoebe joins him. She urges them to take the floor, hands interlaced and all. As they both will not be attending school in NYC together, they say they will try long distance, then jokingly say it is doomed. 